Hello and welcome to Fire Headlines, where we discuss the hottest fire news to hit within the last two weeks. I'm your host, Inanna Hanke, and today I am joined by resident panelist Jeff Buchanan, and we are thrilled to have two guests with us, Captain Adrian Ziad and Deputy Chief Kalila Yancey. Adrian is the second vice president, and Kalila is the secretary and treasurer for the International Association of Women in Fire and Emergency, or Women in Fire for short. We're so happy to have you join us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate this opportunity. Yes, thank you, Jeff and Ayana. We thank you so much for allowing Women in Fire to be a part of this awesome podcast. The topic that we have today is women in specialized fire service roles. For example, track rescue. The Indianapolis 500 track rescue teams have women responding to wrecks on the speedway. 120 firefighters make up the track rescue team for the Indianapolis 500, nine of which are women. For our guests, what has been your experience with women going for, you know, more targeted fields? Um, I'm in an early large department. We're about almost 600 in suppression. And so we have a couple of specialties. Um, We have our technical rescue and we rarely get women on there, but we do get women that are interested. And so in our technical team does, you know, high angle rescue, there's a dive team, there's a, we have a SWAT team. And so we do often have uh, people interested in those fields, women specifically interested in those fields. But again, wherever your interest is, I don't see a lot of that, but when they are interested or whatever they're interested in, I think we need to nurture that. Some people are under the impression that that's not an opportunity for them and they need to know it is. When we gather, when we're out with our small children or even our adults, they need to be able to see that that's an opportunity. I can't tell you how often I've been on a fire or driving a fire truck where women were like, oh my goodness, you're driving that big rig. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I didn't know you could do that. So um, it's just important. We're, we're all visual people and we need to see it to believe it. So I think it's great. Like I said, we don't have a lot of women who are in our specialty teams, but when we do, we definitely advocate and, and nurture that and support wherever we can. I would have to agree with Adrian. Um, we do not currently have a lot. Um, my department, we have about 1,700 members. Um, we don't have a lot that's in specialty areas, but we do have some that take all of the training, high angle rescue, trench training, swift water, and they do great at what they do. It's some of them that are officers in those areas, and they do great, but it would be great to see more women venture to those areas as well. And I think we're getting there because before at at one point in time, we didn't have any. So it's it's getting better. And I think we have a um, you know, a a way to go. But I think uh, as long as we keep pushing things and making women visible, as Adrian said, and letting them ensuring them that is nothing that they can't do, I think that we will see a lot more in the years to come. Jeff, what were your thoughts about this article? Well, where my thoughts go is the difficulty, whether it be the Indianapolis 500 track rescue team, Baltimore fire, DeKalb County fire, is how difficult it is to recruit and particularly women. And I I would love to hear Clela and Adrian speak to the audience that's trying to recruit the best firefighters. We just want more firefighters. We want more women to join the ranks of the fire service. Speak to those individuals that are banging their heads up against the wall. How do they do it? How do they get more women interested in coming to their fire department? Well, you you have to make them feel welcome, first of all. People are not going to come where they're not wanted and I'm speaking on the female aspect. So you have to make sure that they're coming into a welcoming environment, a place where they can feel included. And, you know, you'll get more buy-in once you see more and people encouraging each other and the women to come in. I think that will definitely help. But overall, as far as recruitment and retention, I think we're seeing this generational gap. 
and the difference of how people look at careers and things. I think the younger generation right now, they kind of lack people skills in a sense because they can do everything at their fingertips with their phone. Where generations in the past, you went outside, you had to communicate, you sat down and you had dinner together. All of those things are some of the reasons why we're not seeing younger people want to join this profession because they're, they're so used to just being able to do things at the drop of a dime and change their mind. And here in, in the fire service is more traditional, it's structured, it's paramilitary. So sometimes they have to be prepared and understand that how this environment is. So I think that as the fire service, if we can adjust a little bit to get them to understand that, then we can get, we can start to get more people in and recruit the younger generation, because right now it's like, you know, everything is just kind of fly by night. They can do, they can be an influencer on the internet and make a lot of money. So, you know, the fire service, like, why well, am I going to go risk my life when I can just sit at home and be on my phone? But if, you, you know, we have to make it um, appealing to them. So I think if we start doing that and curtail to the generation, we'll start to get that younger generation back and that hunger to be in this great career that we had. That's a fascinating point of view that I had not heard before, but I love that perspective. What comes to mind for me is almost like the epidemic of loneliness among young people as well that I have heard lots of stories about how, you know, people, while they're more connected virtually, they're less connected socially. And of course, I think that being present online and having visibility in that way is helpful for recruitment and getting people to know that this is a great career that they could be involved in. But maybe it could appeal to the need that we have for real social connection as well. Like it's a very social job and so many folks are isolated right now. That just came to mind for me. But Adrian, did you have a word that you wanted to say? I did. Um, and Khalil is completely right. That being comfortable in the space is so important. Um, I've heard fire, female firefighters say that, um, and statistics show that even if they love the job, some of them have thought about leaving because of that piece of not being comfortable. But I think also we can get them in through um, a lot of departments. Arlington, Virginia had a girls camp. So that's one piece, one way to bring them in. We have an explorer program. So we take children ages 14 to um, 18 and kind of show them and they learn early that structure, that discipline, you know, that being off of your phone that Khalil was mentioned, um, where you have to be present. They travel around the country and they compete, but they learn the basic skills. They learn EMT skills. They learn how to hook up to a hydrant, how to dress out quickly. And these are all things that we learn in recruit school as when you're becoming a firefighter. So they learn these skills early and then they have an opportunity to apply once they turn 18. But yeah, we have to be there to um, nurture that interest and to go out. Again, you have to be out in your community and be actively talking to people about these opportunities. So that's one way to bring um, not only females, but like she said, get like you talked about get that candidate who this really does appeal to them because we're dealing with a different generation. Dr. Lori did a presentation, um, the U.S. Fire Administrator did a presentation on how we communicate with these next generations. They communicate different from us. And she made some very, um, very revealing um, how we think about things. You know, she'd say a word and what part of the audience would chime in was my generation. And then she'd mentioned some other words that I wasn't familiar with because I'm not on social media. So, and then that younger generation would chime in. And so we have to figure out how to communicate with them. When I came in the fire service, that was, it was a time of, you know, they just gave you direction and it was a do as I say, not as I do. Um, they, we, you had to earn respect where this generation thinks differently. You have respect until you give them a reason not to. So just little simple things like that, how they think outside the box, how they think differently from us. So it's how, how do you appeal to that? And then how do you communicate with them and bring them in and then keep them engaged? Any last thoughts about this topic before we wrap it up today? I'll just throw another shameless plug for Women in Fire because we're working <laughs> with NDRI again on um, girls camps, girls summer camps. And you can also go to Women in Fire's website 
And we have a page where you can see the different departments and all the um, female camps that they are hosting because we're trying to expose more women to the fire service and get them interested, um, just like Adrian said. So shameless plug for um, Women in Fire again. And also I want to highlight our Women's Weekend with the National Fire Academy that will be happening um, our first annual on June 24th and 25th. We have about six different classes that you can choose from, and we would love to see you there. We'll have a um, meet and greet night, and Dr. Lori Moore Merrill, our U.S. Fire Administrator, will come give a word. I think it'll be an awesome time, and we would love to see as many women as possible come. So if you haven't signed up, either go to Women in Fire's website or go to NFA's website and click on the link, and we hope to see you all there. We love it. Yes to the shameless plugs. And who else do you want to hear from as an organization? If we've got listeners who are curious about you, who needs what you do? What kinds of questions do you want to receive? Who should be going to your website? Who do you want to hear from? We welcome everyone because we we want to just educate everybody on, you know, women in the fire service and let them know that, you know, we're here. We want to be included. Um, we want to feel welcome. We want to let them know if there's anything they're lacking within their respective departments that they can turn to us as far as mentorships, just little um, information tidbits. If you just need networking or just someone to talk to, we have all of those resources. As Adrian said, we have state reps, we have trustees, we have different ways that we can extend our arm and help as many women as possible. That's our ultimate goal. We wanna to stick to our mission, vision, and values of always trying to encourage and help women and one another. But like we said, we don't wanna leave the men out. So sometimes men may need that encouragement. We're here for you as well. Yes, we have something for everyone. And that's one of the reasons why I joined this organization, even though we are uplifting women. And like she said, Kalila said, we have something for everybody. So we're, we're an open book. Our website is full of information. They can reach out. One of the things I'm very passionate about is mentoring. So um, I love to extend that olive branch and see where I can be of assistance to anyone. Because sometimes people just need to know that they're not alone. So please, if anyone is out there listening to this and you just have a question about anything, just reach out and we'll see where we can be of assistance. Cleela, Adrian, you've been so awesome. Thank you for, for, for coming on the show and sharing the message and it's huge. Jeff, thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity. Um, it's, it's shows like yours and people like you all who see that there's a need and advocate and um it's it's we're all working together to accomplish the same goals so it's truly appreciated thank you again thank you if you want more information about the awesome work that women in fire is doing you can visit womeninfire.org thank you so much for tuning in today if you have a question for the panel please reach out to us at fireheadlines at wfca.com and let us know what's on your mind we'll see you back here next week for more fire headlines Thank you.